The story of Spider-Man 2 from beginning to end is a classic epic comic book adventure. Something we've come to expect from Insomniac after what is now three incredibly stellar Spider-Man releases. And naturally, we aren't just happy with what we've got. And so we and many others have started to look ahead at potential DLC or indeed a full-blown Spider-Man 3 and what it might entail. Insomniac Superior sequel sets the stage for more Spidey titles, though not everything might be obvious to newcomers. So let's break down everything that goes on in Spider-Man 2's ending and go through everything it could potentially set up. And this should go without saying, massive spoiler warning for Spider-Man 2 and everything that happens at the end of the game. You've been warned, so let's get into it. Going into the final battle of the game, Peter, Miles and MJ aim to defeat Venom, or Harry, and destroy the meteorite that connects the symbiote hive mind, destroying Venom along with freeing all of the citizens who have been transformed into symbiotes as well. Despite Peter being warned that Harry can no longer be saved, Dr. Connors saying that his best friend is too far gone, the original Spider-Man still manages to free Harry from the Venom symbiote thanks to his new anti-venom powers. It spares him from the impact of the meteorite being destroyed shortly after, which results in the symbiote humans being freed and the lone venom dying by burning away. But sadly, due to the already weakened state from his disease, Harry's body couldn't handle all of the trauma it had just been put through, and he dies shortly after. Thankfully, Miles uses his electric venom powers as a makeshift defibrillator and brings him back to life. And although Harry is alive at the end of Spider-Man 2, he now lies in a coma at Oscorp Tower, with only traces of brain activity and his chances at coming back being very slim. It's not all doom and gloom, though, at the end of Spider-Man 2. At a spider family gathering at May's house, Peter reveals to MJ Miles that he's restarting the Emily May Foundation, resurrecting it as a start-up in his garage. And while MJ has her new podcast, The New Normal, to try and move forward in her journalistic career, Miles happily gives Peter his blessing to leave the role of Spider-Man entirely to him. Miles becomes New York's only Spider-Man while Peter takes at least a sabbatical from web-slinging, so the OG wall crawler can try to save the world as himself for once without being a vigilante. So that's the main synopsis, let's get into the theories. In a mid-credits scene, Norman Osborn visits Otto Octavius, Peter's former mentor and main villain from the first game, in prison at the raft. With a new vendetta against the Spider-Men after what's become of his son, Norman tries to get Otto to divulge their identities. Now, Doc Ock doesn't tell him, obviously, because he hates Norman, after what Osborn did to him in the 2018 game. Fair play. But Norman changes the subject by asking what Otto was writing before his arrival, with the latter grasping at his notebook, smirking, and replying with the final chapter, hinting at his own revenge plan against Spider-Man. So are we going to see a return to the main villain role for Otto Octavius? And could he even team up with another iconic villain from Spider-Man's back catalogue? Before we get to that though, one of the biggest surprises at the end of Spider-Man 2 was in the post credit scene, and the reveal of Cindy Moon, also known in the comics as the hero, Silk. Miles' mother Rio mentions early in the game that she's been dating someone and would like Miles to meet him. But you might have forgotten about that come the end. So, as the scene shows, the man Rio had been dating was in fact Albert Moon, who is Cindy's father in the comics, and we can now confirm this is Insomniac's version of Silk's alter ego. Silk, in the history of the comics, has essentially similar powers to the Spider-Men, after also being bitten by a radioactive spider. Think super strength and speed and a powered up spider sense called Silk Sense, but she also has organic webs like Sam Raimi's Peter Parker, as opposed to the technologically developed ones we've come to know and love in the most recent games and movies. So will we get to play as another Super Spidey? Or will Insomniac bring Silk in as more of an antagonist? Not only has the ending of Spider-Man 2 and its post credit scenes laid the groundwork for a potential mainline Spider-Man 3 sequel, it's also a potential second Miles Morales spin-off game as well. After gaining his powers in the first game and coming into his own in a dedicated spin-off, Miles is now New York's only active Spider-Man, and Insomniac have the perfect setup for a second namesake Miles Morales title. What's more, with the introduction of Cindy Moon, aka Silk, now a part of his personal life, there are a ton of possible ways that her own Spidey powers could develop, which could see Miles taking on a mentor role in the same way that Peter was to him. Either way, following a potential Miles Morales sequel or just jumping straight ahead to a third mainline game, Spider-Man 2 has done a lot of setup for a Marvel Spider-Man 3. The most notable setup is Harry Osborn or even Norman becoming the Green Goblin. It's probably Spider-Man's most notorious enemy in all of Marvel media. And after a violent outburst by Harry's hospital bed, Norman calls what I assume to be one of his scientists saying, get the G-serum ready ASAP. If that wasn't too on the nose for you, that is almost certainly Insomniac's version of the Goblin formula, which gave Norman his enhanced strength and altered mind in the comics, and is the alternative cure the character had been working on during the events of Spider-Man 2. Although the cure was intended for Harry, the G-serum and its predicted powers could end up going to Norman, his son as planned, or even both. And all of that is before we even get to the possibility of DLC around the mysterious cult, the Flame. If you followed the Flame side missions all the way through to its conclusion, it's pretty much all but confirmed that the leader of the Flame in Spider-Man 2 is Cletus Cassidy, aka Carnage. The human host who, in the comics and recent Venom movie, 
becomes the red symbiote wearing supervillain. Although he only goes by the flame, there are more than a few super obvious hints that he is in fact about to go full carnage. In the finale of the flame side missions, you come face to face with the enigmatic leader of the cult after successfully derailing an Oscorp train and saving a bunch of innocent civilians from being burned alive. The flame comes in as a red-headed man, bright red burn scars down his arms and hands, not quite carnage, but the red look is definitely a bit on the nose. It's then revealed that the Flame wanted the Oscorp train to be derailed so he could steal the sample of the Black Symbiote on board, and quoting his cult states, and when the Crimson Hour rolls over this earth, it shall bring truth, judgement, and carnage. And if that wasn't enough for you, while he's speaking, the Black Symbiote turns red. I mean, do you really need to go any further? It's carnage, people. Obviously, there hasn't been an official announcement on this from Insomniac or Marvel, and chances are just as high they could save Carnage for Spider-Man 3, or a Miles, or even a Silk standalone game. But the OG Insomniac Spidey got its own set of DLC missions, diving further into Black Cat and Silver Sable stories, so there is a precedent. Which leads us to our final question, will Peter stay retired? Although Spider-Man 2's ending saw Peter step back from being Spider-Man to have Miles take over, it's almost certain he'd return to the spandex and web swinging for a third game, right? The clue is in Miles' words whilst he was giving Peter his blessing, saying, Go be Peter Parker for a while. For a while, being the key words there. The most likely course of events in Marvel's Spider-Man 3 is that Norman or Harry Osborn go full Green Goblin, potentially in league with Doctor Octopus, and be too much for Miles as the city's only wall crawler to handle alone, forcing Peter early out of his retirement slash sabbatical to join the fray. And whether she's already gained her powers in a second Miles Morales game, or gets them during the third mainline instalment, Cindy Moon will likely then join the Spider family as Silk as well in one way or another. Either way, with everything Spider-Man 2 throws at us, there are plenty of theories for sequels and spin-offs alike for fans to get their teeth into. But all we can do for now is wait. And if you're looking for more Spider-Man 2 tips, tricks and guides, you should check out these videos here.